crew, uh, they wanted to know, number one, Jason Bauer, one of our listeners, wants to know why you always wear scrubs. <laughs> you know, I tell you, we have battled over the scrub issue for years. We did a big survey when I was still doing the Oprah show uh, about whether I should wear scrubs. Half the population loves them because they think it makes me look accessible. The other half detest them because they think it makes me look sloppy. And here's the reality. I don't want to wear a jacket and tie, although I'm wearing one now, mm -hmm. because on television, when you wear a jacket and tie, you're sending a very clear message to the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very stiff. But more importantly, most people want my, my viewers, when they see someone with a jacket and tie, they're getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or they're, you know, they don't want, I don't want that. I want you to feel comfortable. I'm coming to your home. Mm -hmm. I'm your local healer. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make a connection happen here. I don't want to put a barrier which a tie represents to me. Uh, so that's why I don't like to wear a jacket and tie. Whether I'm wearing scrubs, which is usually a sign to you that I'm going to do some organs or play or dance or something, or wearing a, you know, a, it's just a, a pair of slacks and a shirt, it's the same basic message. I, I'm in your home. I want to be comfortable with you, in part to make you comfortable with me. I love the scrubs. Uh, me too. Oh, yeah, because how, you, we don't get access to that, to that knowledge. Um, I have a question for sure. my mom. Oh, yeah. um, she wants to know about hair loss. Mm -hmm. Um, she's been battling it for quite some time now, and she's 61. But yet, I'm seeing more and more uh, the younger. F okay, <laughs> you no, look I like got you got the answer. No, I, I, well, first of all, I, I hear the question. I know that it pains people a lot. I tell you, I never realized how big an issue hair loss was to women uh, until I started doing the show. Forty percent of women have hair loss. Mm. You know, it's only half that. Men, men have 80 percent hair loss, but women will lose hair enough of the time that it makes their their lives miserable. Minoxidil is an over-the-counter drug that's not being supplied. Uh, it actually works pretty well in helping preserve hair that's, uh, in women who are losing it. But before you start taking a lot of drugs, you first need to make sure your hormones are in shape. Because women will lose their hair because they've got thyroid abnormalities. They'll lose it because they're going through menopause or have gone through menopause and lost some of those key hormones that make up the magic soup to base your hair follicles. Mm. So check out the hormones and, and make sure you're not anemic or anything like that. And then once you get past there, there are drugs now that are inexpensive that people can take. Uh, they will actually help them maintain the hair that they still have left. You won't grow new hair, yeah. but you won't lose any more hair. Mm. Another uh, listener wants to know what you think about right for your type, uh, right for your blood type diet. Eating right for your blood type. Believe in that or not? I do believe in it, actually. It's not quite as scientifically proven as I would have liked, but here's the basic premise. Our ancestors grew up with different kinds of food. And so if they have those foods and they're available to you, you're going to eat them, right? So as someone who grew up in, uh, in Northern Europe, wouldn't have had plants and vegetables in the summertime, in the wintertime rather, mm -hmm. right? So he couldn't have gotten used to eating them all year long. So they're gonna eat certain kinds of foods, like meats and dairy, and they're gonna do just fine with that, mm -hmm. because that's all they had for a good part of their life cycle. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who lived in Africa, well, you know, they, they had access to a lot of stuff, but they didn't have a lot of milk available to them. Okay. So they have lactose deficiency. Mm -hmm. If you eat the kinds of foods your ancestors ate, you'll more likely move back to your playing weight. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, my family's from Turkey. So the Mediterranean basin had a little bit of meat and a little bit of fruits and vegetables, a mix. So you can pick and choose where you think your ancestors came from, but one inexpensive way of doing that is your blood type. Right. Because your blood types are different. The O's, African Americans, I'm an O. I'm an O. Well, remember, it, pro, you're probably O. Well, that's the, that's the, the, the numbers are. If you're, a, if you're an A, you're probably from Northern Europe. You know, you know, you know, whites, but you know, light colored white people. And then if you're from the Far East, you know, Asians are often are type B. So that's sort of how you divide up all of humanity. There's some sub-variations, and there's a brand new test just came out. It's a swab from your mouth. They can actually tell you genetically more details about what kind of food you'll do well on. Okay. Really? Yeah, we can do show cool. on the real cool stuff. Oh, okay. really, really awesome. cool. All right, 11 weeks to uh, move it and lose it. We're checking in every single week. And uh, thank you, Dr. Oz. It's been a real you. blessing. Thank you. you oh, I want to meet your moms. You. Oh, thank <laughs> thank you. I know. I Won't you say something? Oh. You're a cafe mocha. It's okay. On here. Okay. And we're going to take a picture real quick. Oh, okay. Get where close. Mm -hmm. Say, Dr. Oz, we're going to ask them. We're where here on the Sony lot with Dr. Oz and Cafe Mocha. Thank you so much, sir. I love being here. It's good to be a Cafe Mocha. I think it's better already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 11 weeks to move it and lose it. Woo! I'm signing up. Okay. I'm going to sign up. <laughs>